You know, when you think about it from a first principles perspective, living long and finishing strong is simply a function of putting your biological machinery in a position to do its thing, AKA operate efficiently. And the longer you can do that, odds are the longer you live. Hell, Ali, it's science. But still, only theory until we actually start doing it. Let's see how. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftonbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are getting microscopic because that's where all the longevity magic hides. Exploring a key piece of cellular machinery, which happens to be absolutely critical for our efficient operation ambitions. And how these biological components are at the core of a process, which is not only needed for longevity, but for minute to minute life. Yeah. We are spotlighting our lysosomes or the in-house cellular machinery responsible for cleaning up all of our cellular trash and how these cellular garbage trucks are at the core of a key cellular recycling process called autophagy. I told you we were getting microscopic, but by the end of this powwow, you will not only be informed on how these two interrelated phenomena work their longevity magic, but you'll also know what lifestyle habits stimulate your cells to undergo this cleanup process more often. Because we've all seen what happens when we don't do the dishes for a week, and it's not a pretty picture. However, when you integrate these habits into your daily routines, it's like you're automatically loading and putting on the dishwasher every day. Much easier. So let's embark because the sooner we start the cellular cleaning, the better. And what better place to begin than explaining what exactly this cellular cleanup is in the first place. And to do so, let's time travel back because this process is believed to be as old as complex cellular time. That is as old as eukaryotic cells or the cells with a nucleus and mitochondria that have paved the way for complex life as we know it. Researchers date autophagy's origins back one to two billion years, solidifying it as an absolutely critical for biological business process. But what exactly is it? Well, at its core, it is our in-house cellular recycling system, a process which activates the cellular sanitation team to clean up damaged and harmful components within the cell. Damage, might I add, which is inherently tied to living life. This process collects these damaged components, breaking them down to either be repurposed for another cellular endeavor or completely exfiltrated out of the cell altogether. And guess which core organelles carry out this recycling process? The lysosome. And in a perfect world, when this system is firing on all cylinders, it leaves only the fittest, healthiest, and insult-free cells selling, reducing the organism's overall risk of dysfunction and ultimately disease. Now, just in case you are still doubting the importance of this process, let me enlighten you on what happens if this natural cleanup system is blocked because researchers have run the experiment in animal models, being shocked to see their quick and ultimate demise. Yeah, if you wanna stay open for biological business, you need to be recycling. And unfortunately, it seems that animals become less efficient at it as they age, with research suggesting that lysosomes frequently become damaged resulting in an uptick of nefarious cellular material floating around and subsequent damage which either kills the cell or worse, leaves it in a senescent state or a state where it stops dividing, secretes inflammatory compounds and damages everything in the vicinity instead, which happens to be one of the hallmarks of cellular aging. I know, not cool. And wouldn't you know it, autophagy, specifically microautophagy, has been discovered to be the process which repairs damaged lysosomes. Huh, you don't say. 
with new research from the University of Osaka displaying that microautophagy plays a crucial role in repairing damaged lysosome membranes, a process termed microlysophagy. Try saying that five times fast. Microlysophagy, 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 micro... Uh, maybe I can do it. <laughs> Moving on. So it looks like we find ourselves in a little bit of a biological revolving door. We need healthy lysosomes to carry out cellular recycling, and we need cellular recycling to keep our lysosomes healthy, thus making it a worthy endeavor to intentionally do things that upregulate this process and keep our biological machinery operating efficiently. Let's see how we can do just that. When it comes to ramping up this recycling and repair process, I got some good news. There happens to be quite a bit of proven ways that we can increase autophagy throughout the body. In fact, I did a whole video on my daily autophagy routine right here. Many of these lifestyle factors stimulate this clean up mechanism by eliciting a physiological stress, or what I like to call good stress, taunting the cell like an opposing fan at a football game to hunker down and survive. This response ultimately helps preserve cellular energy, reduce oxidative stress, clean up misfolded proteins, and stimulate mitochondrial turnover, thus helping the cell survive, which is kind of the goal for every cell and organism. And if the cell can't handle this stress due to their damaged machinery, it programs a controlled cellular death, a process called apoptosis. So what actually flips on the autophagy switch? Let's talk about it. And the first is a very common topic on this channel, energy restriction and fasting. As studies on time-restricted feeding in humans have shown that consuming one's daily energy in an eight hour window or less can upregulate the expression of autophagy genes, especially when compared to the societal norm of 12 to 16 hour daily windows. That being said, if you really want to ramp up autophagy, longer fasts to the tune of 24 plus hours at a time seem to be a much more potent stimulator, with studies in mice showing that fasting 48 hours compared to 24 hours produces more autophagosomes, which are the vessels which initiate the cellular cleanup. The sweet spot in humans is estimated to be somewhere between 36 and 72 hours to really get autophagy in full swing. Now, before we move on, chronic calorie restriction or chronically eating less has also shown to be a good inducer of autophagy. However, it's a tougher intervention for most people to swallow. Pun intended. Next, we have an autophagy stimulator that has been shown to be potentially more potent than fasting, and that is vodanka donking, aka exercise. Research has shown that exercise increases the release of proteins that kick off this cellular cleanup process, displaying that just 30 minutes of cardio is enough to induce autophagosome formation, which indicates the initiation of autophagy. Resistance training is also a good option, as it has been shown to activate autophagy and reduce apoptosis in muscle cells. But donka donking, at it again. Next, we shift to what we eat or don't eat. Carbohydrate restriction or eating low carb has been shown to increase autophagy by inducing a state of ketosis. Then we have the consumption of dietary phytonutrients, which are plant polyphenols, flavonoids, and compounds found in the pigments of fruits, veggies, and legumes, many of which displaying promise in upregulating the pathways which stimulate autophagy. Thus, why well, it's a good idea to eat your colors. You'll also be pleasantly surprised to hear that coffee and tea are good options too, as their phytonutrient profiles have been linked to autophagy. Lastly, I want to shout out some magic mushrooms. Not that kind of magic, medicinal magic. As preliminary research suggests that reishi, chaga, lion's mane, and cordyceps can lower inflammation and activate autophagy. A lot of different options to get our autophagy on, and we're not even done yet, because we cannot forget or disregard the good stress that comes with getting a little hot and 
getting a little cold. As the heat shock response from planned heat exposure, think sauna, has shown the potential to induce autophagy in animal models, repairing damage and misfolded proteins in a similar manner to autophagy. And on the other side of the spectrum, cold exposure, think ice bath and cold shower, has been shown to induce autophagy as well, with the cold shock response driving an increase in the key proteins responsible for autophagy. Lastly, we have everybody's favorite pastime, sleep. And this is another reason why we can't get enough of it. High quality circadian aligned sleep that is, as it has been shown to be critical for reaping all of the full benefits of autophagy. One reason being that our master sleep hormone, melatonin, plays a key role in modulating autophagy. So keeping strong circadian alignment, going to bed when the sun goes down and waking up when the sun rises, prioritizing an eight hour sleep opportunity each and every night is the final critical piece to the cellular cleanup puzzle. Oh, and uh, stress, stress management. That is, because chronic stress or the low dose arousal of our fight or flight nervous system has been shown to suppress autophagy. One of the many reasons it's not cool for longevity school, but also important to call out because it is the elephant in the health and longevity room for many. The coolest part of all this is that these interventions not only stimulate intracellular autophagy, but also a process called mitophagy, or the cleanup and recycling of our critical energy producing organelles, our mitochondria. The cellular machinery which lies at the foundation of all things cellular health and longevity. So yeah, that's a pretty good value add as well. Value adds, might I add that we have exclusive deep dives on all across this channel. So I'll drop all relevant links to all relevant videos in the show notes below. Like I said way back in the intro, this game of health and longevity is less about adding every supplement therapy and latest trend that you can find and more about putting your biological machinery, the machinery which lies within and has evolved over billions of years of natural selection in a position to do its thing. Something that our modern day societal norms actively work against as the 24 seven ultra process eating, the sleep when I'm dead mentality, the extreme sedentary behavior and severe nature deficit cultivate an environment of inefficient and impaired biological operations, thus leaving us sad, mad, moody, sore, achy, tired, less intelligent walking apes because of it. Making morbidity or the state of being diseased the status quo. And I'm here to remind you that it don't gotta go down like that. The habits that you need to take back control are at your disposal. All you need to do is get off your ass and start cleaning the dishes already. Or better yet, set up the nightly dishwasher. Cause a clean home is a happy home. You. You get the analogy. You, you get it.